So these are the drains. Now you look at the communicable and non-communicable diseases in India. I'm approach. I'm looking at it only from the Indian point of view at the moment. We have about let's say close to 10 million deaths. Okay. Now out of those 10 million deaths, you will find more than the people dying. More important is the disability adjusted life years. You as a physician or me as a physician would not like to be disabled with any form so that you cannot contribute what you have been taught to do so and also the quality of life that you lead. So sometimes we look at it, what's more important than uh, the communicable disease or the non-communicable disease training. Now communicable disease you would say is infectious disease which is kind of transmissible and non-communicable disease is not really transmissible person to person other than through genetic mechanisms of hypertension and diabetes. So what you don't want is you want somebody to have a full long life. And today the life expectancy, if you are born today in India, it is 69.5 years. I've crossed it, for I've got a bonus. I've got a one year bonus after, after exceeding the life expectancy in India. So now having reached the age of 70, my life expectancy is another 13 more years. That is how you have to look at it. And so I can have a problem with infection, with communicable disease and non-communicable disease. Every individual can do so at that. Next slide, please. So what next? Yeah. Now, now what would you, so if you really want to be of service to the community or the people that you, under whom you serve, now you look at, you, you look at what are the common disorders that are there. Now, if I, if I uh, say that, okay, like ischemic heart disease or stroke, is one of the common conditions. Yes, it is a common condition. But you look at in terms of the number of people being affected. Now, you, you don't you get ischemic heart disease and stroke only predominantly among those about the age of 55, 60, etc. But the other childhood illnesses and the hepatitis and tuberculosis, respiratory infection affect several people even before they get onto their comorbid conditions associated with diabetes or hypertension. Next slide, please. What I am trying to say in this is you are serving a large or a 1.4 billion people, number of people. All of the, each one of them have their health problems. There's nobody here who doesn't have their health problem. So how are these people treated? How are they going? How are they addressing the issues that they have? There are more than 300 symptoms that a patient could possibly have. I teach about 136 symptoms. And each system has got about specific cardinal symptoms of each uh, of uh, uh, in each of the systems. So now there are several people who are looking at the health of the nation. Now it can be in the government sector, primary, secondary, or tertiary, or in the private sector. And there are several traditional medicine practitioners. I don't find fault with any one of the group, but all that I say is, if they've got the knowledge and the clinical skills, you can handle your patients. And if you can build on your skills and your knowledge base, you can you can treat them better. So having um, having said this, how do we train ourselves? Next slide, please. So now today we have got. I've written this article for our college newsletter. We've got the four ends. The four ends are typically the national education policy 2020 that has come out, which allows a lot of upgrading in your skills, the training process doing a combined BBS and an PhD. Then you've got the National Medical Commission, which has replaced the Medical Council of India, who gives the regulatory body that gives us the degrees. Then you've got the National, um, the National Board of Examinations that gives us these, the same degrees which the National, the National Medical Commission gives us. But one is in the National Medical Commission gives degrees in the medical colleges, which is highly regulated, and in the National um, the Board of Examination, it's also regulated, but it's also conducted in tertiary care hospitals where the, um, the, the tra training and the teaching go on simultaneously. Then you've got the Niti Ayo, which gives us the ideas and the concepts of how the major educational policies should be conceptualized and put into practice or implemented. So this is one of the major changes that have occurred in the, in the last one and two years, 1920, and we have adopted it. And in the undergraduate education and BBS, we've got the competency-based medical education, which I will share. Next slide, please. So you see now we've got a, let's say, close to 500 medical colleges or some are functioning, some are not functioning, etc. We have over 50,000 seats in the medical colleges in India. 
And you see now 500 medical colleges and globally we have 2,250, which is one fifth almost uh, the number of number of uh, medical colleges in our country, uh, one fifth that in, in the world. Okay, next slide. So we've got a large number of medical colleges. Next slide, please. And what is medical education actually? Medical ed education is nothing but the method methodical creation of the habit of thinking. Now we've got next slide, please. So what do we mean by this? Now, when making of a physician, we've got the curriculum. We've got the really curriculum and syllabus is used interchangeably. It's only the body of knowledge. What is the body of knowledge that a medical student should know? Everyone is very anxious. They, they are apprehensive. They are even you know, concerned and, and really worried and um, as to what is the medical curriculum for the future doctor. Yes, today's doctor, yes, we know. So what are the learning outcomes? Well, we want to be a safe and effective prescriber, no doubt about it. We, nobody wants to kill a patient and a competent. And we have to reflect on our practice of medicine. Of course, the professional values, which I alluded to in my first slide as the dream of a doctor. Yes, I do want to get a PG seat. Yes, I want to be a part of a medical workforce, either independently or with a group. Yes, if given the opportunity, I don't mind training others in the right ways of practice of medicine. And above all, I want a good relationship with doctors, patients, and have a good educational partnership. So if these are the learning outcomes, next slide, please. What is the time frame that we have from the day of joining or until the graduation? Next slide, please. 